Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. During an October 5th event at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's People's Garden in Washington, NASA Deputy Administrator Dava Newman and USDA Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin signed an annex to an interagency agreement the two signed in June. The annex encourages collaborative efforts by the agencies to engage youth in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM activities, including agriculture literacy and food science. Following the signing, they and NASA astronaut Katie Coleman helped students plant lettuce seeds similar to the variety recently harvested and eaten by the crew aboard the International Space Station. Four NASA-sponsored CubeSats and a NASA-funded CubeSat sponsored by the National Reconnaissance Office were among 13 small satellites launched from California's Vandenberg Air Force Base on October 8th as part of an auxiliary payload aboard the NROL-55 mission. The NASA-funded device will test how accurately a CubeSat can be pointed during high-speed data transfer by laser. The NASA-sponsored CubeSats will test new small satellite control and communications systems, Earth observations, amateur radio communications, and an X-band radio science transponder. NASA recently conducted the first series of tests to develop a safe and efficient procedure to get astronauts out of NASA's Orion spacecraft following splashdown landings in the Pacific Ocean. During the testing at Johnson Space Center's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, support personnel worked through various exit strategies for the crew. Lessons learned from the exercises will also help evaluate the layout of equipment inside the spacecraft that could affect the recovery process. Just as pioneers had to do when setting out for the new world, NASA is trying to figure out how astronauts can live off the land as part of the journey to Mars. The goal is to use resources from the planet instead of having to bring everything with them. NASA kicked off the in-situ resource utilization challenge October 7th, asking the public for ideas on how surface-based materials, such as regolith or crushed basalt, could be used for off-Earth construction. The challenge is open until December 3rd and can be found at www.nasa.gov solve. NASA is unveiling a new opportunity for startup companies to license patented NASA technology with no upfront payment. The Startup NASA initiative aims to encourage the growth of high-tech businesses and advance American innovation by addressing two common obstacles startups face, raising capital and securing intellectual property rights. Six individuals and a group of researchers recently were inducted into the newly established Hall of Fame at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. The ceremony featured remarks by Center Director Jim Free and NASA's Chief Historian Bill Barry. The inductees included three directors, a computer programmer, four researchers, and the designer of NASA's insignia. October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Employees across the agency are encouraged to remember the importance of online security in protecting NASA and personal assets. Please stop and think before you connect to go online. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov.